So let's start. Here we go. I'm going to just take off the very end so that I'm working with a flat surface. And I'm going to drill right the way through the, uh, the carrot if I can. Here we go. That's in reverse. Let's go forward. You have to do this quite slowly, don't you? Because otherwise there's a risk it go, comes out the side and you've got to line this up quite carefully, haven't you? Well, that's right. You've got to be concentrate very carefully on making sure that it goes right the way down the middle of the carrot. What I'm going to do is chop the very end of it off here. There we go. The holes come out the end. And now what I want to do, um, once I've cleared, making sure there's no more debris left inside, brilliant, is I want to make the very end of it slightly uh, wider inside. So I'm going to drill sort of just around the very end, uh, about 10 millimetres down, just to make that very end just that little bit wider. Now the reason why I do that is because what you're trying to do with the fipple, the whistle that makes the sound come out of the carrot, is split the air. Now, down at the end, you've got a resonating tube, but before, at this end, what, you, what you're trying to do is to get the air to rush down and um, have a problem about which way it's going to go, whether it's going to go up or down. So I need to make this end very slightly wider. So is that the reason the recorder's got uh, a hole on top, just near your mouth? Yeah, absolutely, because in a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to create a channel that goes all the way down to the point at which it narrows again, and we're going to, we're going to make a, a sharp um, split in the air channel so that it can't decide which way to go. So now I've gone down to about there, to about there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very small cut in there, which should coincide with the point at which, there we go, the coincide with the point at which it starts to narrow. That's fantastic, okay. Now what I'm going to do now is to cut two parallel sides down there because what we're trying to do is to create a really nice gradual slope. So it might help to look at a real recorder point. here and Yes, that's a very good it. idea and, and, and that's one of the things that helped me um, to get this uh, working is is actually to look at a real fipple of a real recorder and see what it is that actually splits the airline. So there's a channel of air that comes through the top of the mouthpiece and then it hits a point, a sharp point, where it can either go down or up. And of course that's that's the essence of the fipple. And the, the sharpness of the edge is very important, isn't it? You've got to have a really clean cut here. So you've got to have a very sharp knife and that, sharp that's chisel. That's a sharp knife or a sharp chisel, because if you get a sharp chisel, you ought to be able to get a really clean edge to um, the point at which the, the, the air is split. So let's see if I can just... That was a nice way to move the spare bits here, move the loose bits of carrot away, because we definitely don't want those. Have you ever tried blowing down it? Because uh, that clears it out. It goes everywhere, of course. It does here, of course. <laughs> there. Now, what we've got now is um, a, a channel that's starting to appear. I'm just going to make sure that there's a good channel going all the way down there, down to the point at which the other slope going up starts. There we go. Now what I need to do now is block that hole back up again because at the moment the air channel is far too wide. So what I want to do is to block that up and that's what these cork borers are for. I can find the right size which I think should be about that size. Get another bit of carrot, here we go, another bit of carrot here and we can make a sort of bung. There we go, push that up there. So that's going to bung up that same hole. But now what I want to do is cut a flat side 
so that there's a real clear channel running all the way down. To the whistle bit. And how far is that bun going in? Is it going a long way or just a little way in? It's going Compared to the to same the point. So we've got about, um, where are we? There's about 15, maybe two, two centimetres down to this point. So you're bunging that up. You're putting the tube in there. So you've got a channel of air going right the way through here that reaches the point where that slope starts. And that slope's going to um, split the air flow, the air channel, into two. Just there. There we go. So I'm going to give it a whirl just to see if it's starting to work. Now the next stage is to move the bung backwards and forwards because the positioning is absolutely crucial. So here we go, I'm going to try it. You'll know when you start to get it right because it starts to resonate. This is the point where you go back to the drawing board because it's not sort of sounding just right at the moment. So you're listening for a sort of recorder sound coming out yes, of this? you're starting to get a recorder sound coming out of it now. One of the things that seems to help actually is actually cutting the mouthpiece very slightly like that. And I think somehow you blow at a slightly different angle like that. Can you cut holes with it, Steve, so you can get different notes out of it? That's right. What, what I can do now, you see, that's the first note. Just like with the straws, we can change the length of the column. And one of the ways in which we can change the length of the column in a, in a sort of variable way is by making holes. Go on, so show us quickly then, Steve. So now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a small hole with one of these cork borers again. I think I'll take that one there. What should we do? About halfway down? Go for it. About halfway down, so from where the whistle starts down to about there is going to be about there. Here we go. There we go. Right, here we go. Let's try. Now, if I put another note, if I put another hole in about here, I should be able to make a third note. Let's try that. 